When you're planning what support looks like when rolling out your district program, your math district program to teachers, to coaches, to administrators, you know, we, at, at Make Math Moments, we help guide, you know, creating a, a unified vision for mathematics. We want a vision so that teachers have a, their say in what, what is being, you know, the shape of mathematics to come. Like, what what is it that we're after in our classrooms? Uh, we, we tend to do top-down, you know, planning in, in a way, and then we want it to be bottom-up, but top-down at the same time and kind of meet in the middle. That's what we coach here at Make Math Moments. And when we're thinking about what is it that we want to see in our classrooms, what what is it that we're really after for changing instruction? And, and really, it comes down to the math pa mathematical practices that we're seeing in our students. That has to dictate everything that we we are after when we think about what is it that we want in five years in our math classes to look like part you know we have to go we want our students to be you know engaged in productive um you know reasoning and 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 they have they have that productive disposition but they're you know they're using strategic strategies they're you know they're they're focused on the things that matter in our classroom they're they're focused on on proving and reasoning and and you know building from conceptual understanding into procedural fluency these are the practices that we really want in our classrooms we have to think about our students first right like we are always after that so when we're planning what it looks like in our classrooms we are big fans of of the research-based practices the eight effective teaching practices as as a guide for the work that we're doing but also referring to mathematical proficiencies like what are the five strands for mathematical proficiencies we have to think about those when we're building our programs I want to point to a book that we we rely on um, here at Make Math Moments. Um, that book is, you know, everything you need for coaching mathematics. But that book is really taking the principles to action work that uh, that is is guiding a lot of the work that we're doing at districts and a lot of the work I'm sure you're doing at districts and putting it into action for coaching and helping teachers shift their practice. They've got their framework here on, on mathematical proficiency. And you can notice that. It starts with mathematical practices in, for students, and that will require us to have shifts in our math, you know, in our classrooms. And then that we want to include um, what to focus on, like how do we want to focus on that that instructional shifts for our teachers? That's that's getting precise. That's saying not focusing on too many things. Let's pick some things to focus on. And then we'll provide support back to those instructional shifts, which then provide opportunities for students to learn those mathematical practices. Now, this is a great this is a great framework, and it, and it works flawlessly if we are dedicated to making it work. However, I feel like I make math moments. What we do is we take it one step further. We take the same framework, but what we're doing is we're starting with what those mathematical practices need to be in our classrooms. But what we're seeing and what you know is that when you go to think about what shifts are required in our classroom, what, what shifts, instructional shifts do we need to implement with our teachers, they are are often paired. You do need to be, have teachers who have a solid understanding of the conceptual understanding of mathematics. We, so what we like to do is in that middle stage, instead of saying, let's focus on pedagogy and shifts for pedagogical approaches in our classrooms, we do need to focus on shifts for the mathematical proficiencies for the teachers themselves. We have to focus there. It's a really important aspect of making sure this framework works. It's going to work if we focus on that as well as the shifts. Because if we focus on the, you know, making math epiphanies, we've talked about that here in our blog, but also in our courses and also, you know, on our podcast many times about how do we make mathematical epiphanies for our teachers to engage in to make them go, huh, I didn't know that I could do that with mathematics. I didn't know that the behaviors of mathematics look like that. Because that will inspire the pedagogical moves and will inspire those teachers to make those shifts. How can we help them make those epiphanies? Because once we have like the focus on what shifts are required, what what training, what help, what, what epiphanies can we help make with our teachers on their own mathematical proficiencies, that can help direct the objectives for the work that you're going to carry out. We don't want to focus on too many objectives. We want to make sure that we focus on some. And then that can then, we can then turn that objectives back to the support we give on the mathematical proficiencies for our teachers, which in then in turn helps with the shifts in the instructional practice, which then can be, provide those opportunities for students to learn. That's the order we have to do this in. That's, that's a piece that we need to make sure that we're helping our teachers with. You know, while while this original framework from this amazing book, this this great resource, is is there, it's it, it makes sense. We do need to not forget that we do need to help our teachers develop 
their own proficiencies in mathematics, so which means like we need them to be like, if it's multiplying, put the calculator away, for, put the two, you know, the standard algorithm away, the stacking away, have our teachers multiply using the strategies and models we want their students to be engaged in. We have to help them with that as well. We have to help them practice. We have to give them opportunities to engage in that learning for themselves, which will then inspire them to do that in the classroom. So this is the, the, the model that we're using with the districts that we support um, in ongoing learning, ongoing planning for their unified vision. You see that, you know, that, that vision is a part of this because all of this supports the vision we want in our classrooms for our students, for our teachers, for our administrators, for every stakeholder in the system of a district. It's a really important aspect of our district improvement program is getting this model right and figuring out what are those objectives that help, what are the best approaches that help those teachers, you know, change their proficiencies around mathematics you know, or improve those proficiencies in mathematics and also and strengthen those shifts towards those eight effective teaching practices. That's the model we want to focus on. So if you're unsure of, of how, to, how to approach that, we can talk about that. And, um, but you do need to make sure you want to be including these elements in your planning for coaching, for, you know, um, uh, getting, you know, getting support out to the teachers. Think about your channels. We'll talk about channels in another video um, coming soon. But let's try to work on getting this, this model implemented.